Oh my god, the Seagium is actually gorgeous. Hello everyone, I am Tesselating Hexagons, back with some more Even the Ocean. I just forgot what the jump button was, and we have Ice Physics, and I'm dying. Because that reference hasn't been made enough in my recent videos. I would say in this series, but I don't remember whether it was this series alone, or this series, and Cursed Mountain, which just ended like two days ago. Also, hi, I am Tess. And this is the Sea Geome, and the area that we just completed in order to get here was absolutely amazing testicles. You know, amaze balls, but like, even more intense. Ah, that's a chain! Ooh, you thought you could trick my goozle with your ice physics? Well, I shall have none of those. I shall have one of that, though. Obviously. So, yeah, in the last episode we did the waterfall of emotion... And now we're doing shit in motion, because there's wind and ice and momentum and it's gonna be awesome. But yeah, the, the previous area was like, based on purgatory and like, Greek purgatory and also the Buddhist bardo and it's... Ah, I tweeted at the developers to let them know that they did a good job and they tweeted back and it was all kinds of friendly and awesome and yay! Now I've been watching back previous episodes of this series with my mother lately, because I do that sometimes, and... I don't remember what episode I stopped doing it, but I've noticed how when when faced with these water jets, I keep having the shield pointed sideways in earlier episodes. I'm like, no, point it down or up so that you can not... so that you can use it. You know, use it, or lose it, or poop in a shoe with it. Uh, that doesn't sound like a very nice thing to do with your free time. Also, I've noticed that if we're inside the water jet, that doesn't count as being in the sea of gas below. You know, the sea of flags, so beautiful, lifts me up and guides me. I don't remember how that song goes. It was, ah, there's more things that it's trying to momentum me into. Ne oh, now we are going into the the, the, the sea of cheese. Because it's like I'm sailing on a sea of cheese. You know how it bees. You know how it bees. <laughs> Welcome to Applebee's. Would you like the apples or the bees? <laughs> bees? He picked the bees! Oh, now we have wetness. We're going to witness the wetness, and we need to momentum within the water. I'm okay with this. This just in, this geome continues to be amazing. Can I balance now? I've been so... Oh, come on, I've been so out of balance for so many episodes, and I'm still not in the perfect middle. There is a sign. Okay... Sure. Oh, wait, that was a hint for the puzzle that we just completed. We were supposed to fail the puzzle, see that sign, and then come back to it. Okay, I understand your beefaroni. I know what beefaroni is, because we don't have it in this country, but hey. I, I like this geom. This, this tickles so many boxes. It doesn't even tick boxes, it tickles the boxes of what makes a good. And it's gooding. It's like godalming, but gooding. Nee, I got hit by a thing. What do you want from me, game? Because if, if I if I floop upwards too much, then nah, then I'll get hit by the stuff at the top there. I appreciate the puzzle. Clearly, as I've just been taught, I can just sort of hover sideways. No, the timing is slightly fucky, and the physics are brilliant. Y you see what has to be done with this puzzle. It's just trickier in the moment than it has any right to be because physics. They are a thing that things my stuff. But I did it! It feels like I've been talking nothing but shit for the past four and a half minutes, so... If you've made it th this far into the episode, then congratulations! Your reward is a really pretty geome. Which, I mean, we're inside a living being that's somehow equal parts animal, vegetable, and mineral, and why? Why is... Why is this here shooting out stuff? What possible function could that function with its functions? Hmm. Maybe what it wants me to do is charge up on a certain type of energy and then have an easier time with this puzzle, but I mean, I'm I'm playing the jazz oh so well, so listen to me when I tell that I did not just play some light jazz. How did I start the sentence? Got so caught up in my own references that well, it wasn't even my references. There's a video out there called something like, My Car Plays Light Jazz, and then there's someone did a remix of it called My Car Plays Light Jazz and I Play Along where someone closes the glove box of their car, or the glove compartment, or whatever you want to call it, and it sounds like a, a saxophone solo, and then someone remixed that into a full-blown song. Don't you just love the internet? This looks like a mouth. And th these steps are teeth. Now that reminds me, I said I was watching old episodes of this series back. 
Ooh, or it's like Auto Mario, but it's even the ocean. But yeah, in the Restview Beach area, we got to go inside the starfish, and we could see into its stomach. I remember seeing at some point that there's some way of um of being able to kill the starfish. I think, or at the very least, some guy gives you like a a thing to put into the starfish's stomach to make it be less alive. I don't know if that's like a thing that's yet to happen, or if that's a thing that we could have done if I'd spoken to more people at Restview Beach. You know what? No, I, I want to be balanced. I want to see if I can balance. Over bloody shot it. Nyeh. One day I will achieve balance, but this is not that day. But I, I like this. We've had geomes and areas that are so gimmick heavy in terms of puzzle mechanics, and this one, the only gimmick is momentum, and it's really well implemented. I've gushed before about how much I love this game, and this just goes to show, it's not a one-trick pony, it doesn't need these one-off gimmicks like the conveyor belts, or the forcing the shield in a certain direction, or the Yoshi's Island blocks, like, it just has pure, unbridled physics, and th those physics are enough to make an entire level out of. It's... it's jaw penis, by which I mean pure genius, it's not like a guy called George and his penis. I mean, it could be that, if that's what you're into. Far be it for me to pass judgement, or pass wind, or pass the test. <laughs> what test? The test test. Which this game soundly completes. Nee. Don't... Don't slap my leg and call me a bad boy and then tell me I've got a dong knee. Again, references that no one's gonna get. I'm so esoteric and occasionally... Susan. Well, no. Occasionally too self-effacing for my own good. Well... Oh, come on, we could have been perfectly balanced and you... You slooped it out of my sump. Because, you know, sump sump. Well, no, people won't know that reference because, again, that's something that happened to me in my free time. So, no, no one's gonna understand that. Okay, so one of the modules I have to study at university is media and society. And even though the lessons are really dry and really boring, it does have definite right answers, so I kind of prefer the assignments to do with that, although that said, like, literally tomorrow I start semester two, and we're, that module's done, so... Anyway. There's a thing in that called consumption theory, and on one of the many, many, many pages of notes that we've been handed for that particular module, there was a section headed consumption theory, and then, like, a couple of lines in the paragraph below that then spoke about consumption theory. And... It, the way that the paragraphs lined up, just, it said consumption theory and then something something consumption theory, and just the way the word consumption lined up with itself one, like, one line lower, just really tickled me. I drew a couple of lines connecting them, just, just to highlight the fact that it said sump sump, and so that's kind of, what? What? Oh. I was very worried for a second there. But that appears to be light-oriented, so maybe it wants me to, yeah. Okay, that's threatening, but I can live with it. Nee. Why did it throw me sideways? I, I don't want to be thrown sideways. But this is a very ominous mechanic. I'm just going to hide over here for you to disappear, try and be balanced, you know, play a game of basketball. Away with you. You can see how this walk. Th this. <laughs> you can see how this walks, though. The, this thing appears and does a three ball, and then it swamps down and slooshes you, and that's terrifying. And charges you up with whatever kind of energy. Ooh, I did say that this game can survive without gimmicks, and now we have a gimmick, and it's it's very unexpected, and it works wonders. Because I thought this was just going to be a purely momentum-based area, but no, we have a gimmick, but it's a good gimmick. It's a gimmick that I wasn't expecting, and it works very well, and there's not even a secret over here, and I'm slightly disappointed, except this game doesn't do invisible wall secrets. You know, it doesn't do the secret passage. The secret pansage. No, 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 no. I feel like that shouldn't have worked. Like, I, I should have jumped to the wall on my left to avoid the thing sliding downwards and then jump back onto the main wall to continue my ascent, but hey, I did a good in my own way, and the fact that this game accommodates that kind of playstyle, I appreciate. Like, once again, bearing in mind this game was made by two people. It's really, really well, it's really well good, because there's this constant references to 
that I've been making to how it accommodates all these different playstyles. Like, there's more than just one answer to every puzzle in the game, and there's the whole list of like, there's a whole different list of game modes that you can play the game in as well at the beginning. Like, there's full story mode, which, as I've said, is what we're doing. There's, um... Oh, we... Oh! Oh, that's clever. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but that's still clever. So we have purple ones that, that do dark energy, and they go sideways because dark energy is horizontal. Oh, that's so clever. I love it. All right. But yeah, so at the start of the, um, the series, we... Excuse you. Oh, can I bump you with the- Oh, I can bump you with the shield! Oh, that's okay then. Ah, don't even need to bump you out of the way, I could just hit this and then have you fall into that little hole and then you won't be a problem to anyone ever again. Come on, be less of a nuisance. Thank you. So yeah, at the start of the series we got to choose whether to play in full story mode, which is what we're doing, or speedrunner mode, which is just levels like these without any story, or story only mode, which is just the story and no levels. And the fact that they have, like, they've taken all of this into consideration when making the game... Oh, I can stand on it, I was gonna say. Do I have to stand on it and use it like a platform to, to get above? And I do, and I did, and it was good. So, yeah. And then there's also chapter select, which puts you in this mode, but you can choose at which point of the game you wish to begin. And it's so considerate and thoughtful and clever, and all of the puzzles have multiple solutions, and ah, this game made by two people who have, like, the same mentality as the people who've made Discord. The, um, the lovely thing. <laughs> Discord the lovely thing. I mean, that is what it is. Popped my fucking bubble. Take that entirely too personally. Like Discord, for example was made as like a, I guess, a rival to Skype and TeamSpeak and all that shit. But it's made by people who are... Oh, there's a pit down here. Wait, no, it's the wrong colour, never mind. But it was made by people who wanted to collectively game and also Skype or TeamSpeak or whatever at the same time. And so they made a dedicated platform that could do those things without, like... Yeah, they wanted low latency, they wanted dedicated servers, they wanted everything... Like, like, they knew what they wanted, and they made a system that would be able to support that. And they're constantly listening, like, because they, they know where they came from in terms of, like, they are gamers and they started a company. I feel like the guys who made this game kind of have the same situation going on. Because they know what they would want from a game, and they've put that into their game. And so there's a consideration for different thought patterns, different play styles, and then different reasons for playing. So some people are in it for the story, some are in it for the gameplay, and some are in it for the, um, like, you know, some want to speedrun, some want to let's play it like I am. And so they have all these different means of accommodating that. And I appreciate that so much, and it's so clever, and yum. Now don't fluke me into the Fooglies this time. That's... I think that, that that's twice in recent history that I've made reference to Spy Kids, which I've been trying, like, I'm trying to find... Oh, come on, I, I pressed it to jump. I, I shouldn't be saying that, because that's not my meme, but still. But yeah, I... Where should I begin with this story? Okay, so I have an accidental DVD collection. I've, I've started collecting DVDs, even though I'm really, really not a film person at all. I've been collecting DVDs that I intend to watch at some point, and... I've been looking to add the, the Spy Kids films to that trilogy just because... There. I have eight of them. There is, that is in no way a trilogy. And there are at least four Spy Kids films, as I recall. But, yeah. I want to add the Spy Kids films to that collection, simply because... I remember watching at least one of them, at least in part, when I was younger, and liking it to at least a degree, and so I want to watch it to completion and see if it and its sequels are any good. Also, the, the song Game Over from the third one, as I recall, is actually tune, so... Cake burps. I've spoken of those before. Nye. Now propel me up into the blue so I can be a bit more balanced. Oh. I thought the door had already opened, and yet it apparently hadn't. So yeah, I have an accidental DVD collection. I don't... I can't really explain how it's accidental, it just sort of happened. 
and I want to add some films to it, but I can't because everywhere that I look doesn't seem to have them. I love this mechanic because it's so threatening, but also it works as a as a platform to get higher up slightly. It's not just a security threat, it's also a means of platforming. You can't follow me down here, what was the point of you? Blue! Well, green, blue, I can not remember what color the light energy is supposed to be, it just... It looks blue to me, but I think the game wants me to call it green. Okay. So, as long as we put the lenses in place, that means that we've immediately done better than the people of Caravold. But I still feel like that's gonna somehow screw us over in the long term. Because... Oh, okay. If we blow up this geome, and there is, like, the geomes are, in fact, some way of, like, avoiding the apocalypse, then we won't have any means of escape because we will have killed all three of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, and in the last episode, we discovered that, that hummus isn't even human. Just remember that. That kind of came out of nowhere, but in a good way. Like, a good kind of nowhere. No. That's <laughs> just <laughs> slowly descending in defeat. But I guess it wants me to use these platforms as cover, or at the very least... Ah, yeah, you can't touch my lens. You can't touch my boobies. I'm not Rachel Bloom. I don't give out my breasts so easily. Excuse me? So I'm rather interested to see where the story's going to go from this point. Because... We've heard before that the people of Caravold tried to blow up the Geomes, and we're using exactly the same weaponry against them here and now. And they only blew up two of them. And whoever the third one was completely flubbed their mission and were not able to destroy the third geome. And we've destroyed two so far, and we're en route to destroy the third- Oh, ho hold! Hold a fuck. You- You! How dare you be purple energy but sideways? You're not sideways enough. How I'm offended. You're supposed to be sideways energy and yet you're being vertical. Evil, mean beans. Hmm. <laughs> Time check? I've been recording for nearly 18 minutes, and I've still been rambling nothing but rampant bullshit. Uh, I don't know how you put up with me. Okay, that that's that, that's my limit. I'm gonna stop self-effacing for the moment now. Okay, this one it definitely wants me to use the the higher up platforms as cover, because those things... I It looks like those things follow the same physics that we do, where it can't go through one-way platforms. And these are indeed one-way platforms, so... Uh, heal me. Thank you. Wow. Almost perfect balance. So at some point within this, we're going to need to use one of those as a... Fuck you. As a temporary platform. And that's what it wants me to do on that upper level there. Doip. Though I am rather wary of, you know, at what point do they count as solid, especially as far as the, um the lens is concerned. Nee. Okay, we're out of the danger zone for for the hottest of seconds. Gee. High pressure. Difficult times. Can I make go? Well, I mean, if you're going to completely miss, then apparently yes. Ha! You're not so threatening, you squeaky beef. Now... The game Scribblenauts, specifically Scribblenauts Unlimited, the one that allows you to... Well, this is where we came in. Yes, it is. Okay. I know where we are now. Thank you, map. Yeah, it's a game where you get a load of situational puzzles and you need to write the answer, like, using a magic notebook. Like, you could put anything, and that includes, like, things with adjectives as of the, uh, the second game onwards. Although, I, I prefer how the second game handles itself in terms of... Oh, we have to do that twice, once with a horizontal, once with a vertical. That's clever. That is actually clever. I prefer how the, the second game handles itself in terms of, like, level structure and stuff. Whereas Unlimited, which is the third one of, of the four games I think exist, and it, it's, it takes more of an open-world approach, and I can't say I'm a huge fan of that, but still. In, in that game, or the second one, which is for the, the regular DS as opposed to the 3DS, which I think is... Um, uh, Super Scribble Nauts, that's what it's called. My go-to item, if I just want to create random bullshit nonsense items, is Bouncy Bouncy Beef. 
and it, it needs the second bouncy. I'm, I don't care what you have to say, it needs the second bouncy. Now, I would end the episode, because I feel like there's going to be one hell of a cutscene dump up ahead, but no, I think we have time, because we just need to blow up the geome. Yeah. Blow up that last geome, succeed where the car of old civilization failed. Tragic. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about how, oh, it disrupted the flow of emotions and Sharon's work is displeased. Like, oh, like, Sharon is fine, it's just her work that's displeased. Huh, so, we're, we, we're, we're, by definition, better than Caravold. That's the last one, so... Yeah, we just need to head back to Whiteforge. Clearly, clearly nothing is going to go wrong between here and there. I mean, there's not going to be any kind of ominous fuck twumble that... It's going to stop us on the way back and say, Oh, hey, you caused the end of the world to even speed up more. Have the side shoopy things... Dis uh, no, they haven't. There's one. I was going to say, have, have the side shoopy objects disappeared? But no, they have not. Just running back through this area, reminding myself of how I entirely lost count of how many emotions we collected here. By all means, I should end the episode and cut this out and stuff, but... No, this, this is like our victory lap of this area. Still, we are on the way back, so... I shall declare most profoundly that I have been and will continue to be tessellating hexagons, and in the next episode, we'll head back to the Caravold radio tower, let Whiteforge know that we've succeeded, and head home, I guess? And we still have that data thing to deliver from what was their name from the first geome area, so maybe we'll get to deliver that? In all likelihood, we're probably going to be told that somehow killing the geome has made things even worse, Eh, we'll find out. This is the most protracted, long run outro I've ever done, I think. But hey, well, I've already outroed, so yeah. See you in the next episode, and until then, have a nice life.